in that case. Now, here's the question though. What if a woman, you know, can't fast? How does she get the most out of Ramadan? And you know, subhanAllah, I've had sisters break down crying in front of me saying that it's the last 10 nights and I'm not going to be able to fast, I'm not going to be able to pray. You know, Laylatul Qadr, right? The last five nights, I'm not going to be able to fast and pray. There's one hadith wallahi, that should give you a lot of hope. Number one, the Prophet wasallam, he said that whoever becomes ill, and we said qiyas, from analogy, the ulama compared a woman who cannot fast to one who is temporarily ill. The Prophet wasallam, said whoever becomes ill or travels, and they miss out on that which they normally would have done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records it for them in full. The hadith is in Al-Bukhari, tamma. Look at the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah knew that you were going to stand up and pray and that you really had that desire and that knee, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would write it down, not by your standard, by His standard. So you would have the full reward regardless. That's number one. Number two, still reading Qur'an. Now obviously reading Qur'an, that's a long fiqh issue. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that to Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was in his state of janab, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Subhanallah, inna al-mu'min la yanjus. The mu'min, the believer, never truly becomes impure. Okay? He never becomes impure. And actually there's a long hadith in Sahih Muslim, where uh, the Jews, the Orthodox Jews in particular, the, 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 uh, the explanation of the hadith seems to indicate that these were some of the more conservative Jews from Banu Quraidah, that whenever a woman would, would be at that time of the month, when she would be on her menses, that she would be abandoned completely, that she wouldn't be allowed to sleep in the house. Right? SubhanAllah, she was treated like she was, like she was doing something wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, فَاعْتَزِلُ nisa. Okay, to, to leave the women in their times of, of, of uh, menses. And the Prophet ﷺ explained, he said, the only thing that means is not becoming completely intimate with them. And the Prophet ﷺ showed in the way that he used to interact with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and things of that sort, that, that we obviously don't hold that. And actually the Jews of Medina criticized the Prophet ﷺ and they said that he's differing from us again, even on this issue. Meaning what? That we don't see it that way, that the mu'min does not become impure at that time. Impure, the only thing that she's prohibited from uh, definitely is from touching the mushaf. Not because she's impure, because it requires wudu. Okay, it requires the minor form of purity to be able to touch the mushaf and to touch the words of the Qur'an. And she cannot possibly be in that phase. So spiritually she remains in a state of purity. A mu'min never becomes impure. So by all means, doing dhikr, doing dua, reading. What's that? Holding an iPad, you know the ulama, they say that when you're holding an iPad or you're holding an electronic device, it's, it holds, at that moment, it takes the ruling of a mushaf, the words themselves. So you know, they have ways, you know, in the apps that you can turn the page without actually touching the words themselves. At that moment, it functions like a mushaf, from a fiqhi perspective. That's to be on the safe side. Okay, at that moment, it is a mushaf. Okay, but still, she can hold that, and she can read from it. And she can, you know, the, the point is not touching the words, because that's what requires tuhur, that's what requires... Uh, the type of purity that's required just to touch something. So I mean, again, there's a difference of opinion, it's a long discussion, but from a fiqhi perspective still, doing dhikr, dua, reading Qur'an, and understanding husna dhan in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making the dua, Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni, making the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and pardon you, all of that still counts. And Allah will still write down the night for you, inshaAllah ta'ala, in ibadah, because He knows that you would have done it. Can I add something? Yeah, sure. Assalamu alaikum wa I was actually in uh, Dar es Salaam and the Imam was asked the same question and he said something beautiful uh, to the sisters and I wanted to share that here. And that was that not only can a woman not pray and do certain acts in that time, uh, but she's prohibited to do them and her not doing them is actually an act of ibadah. In other words, this woman, in the, entire, that the entirety of the time that she's sleeping and awake and not doing the ibadah that she's normally supposed to do, her not doing those ibadat is actually an act of constant, constant ibadat for her. SubhanAllah. <laughs> that is on, above and beyond the fact that if she was in a healthy state or in a pure state, a completely pure state, she would have done them. So it's recorded for her anyway, above and beyond that, SubhanAllah. So actually, they, it's almost unfair, man. You just gotta <laughs>